So as of May 1st, the first change that we are implementing is reducing the amount of temporary foreign workers entering Canada in certain sectors. À partir du 1er mai, le premier changement. As of May 1st, the first change we are implementing is reducing the number of temporary foreign workers entering Canada in certain targeted sectors. Employers identified in the 2022 Workforce Solution Roadmap will have a reduction from 30 percent to 20 percent of their workforce come in through the temporary foreign worker program under the low wage stream. And let me say, I don't like the name of that stream. We're going to work on changing that. That's for a future, um, a future press conference. Now, the exception to what I just said is for the construction and healthcare sectors. As Minister Miller outlined, these are areas that have uh, critical labour shortages and with the ambition that our government has for building 2.5 million homes over the next 10 years, we need to have every single worker we can in the construction sector and to make sure that our healthcare sector has the workers it needs. That exemption will be in place for occupations in the healthcare sector. Tous les employeurs identifiés dans le plan d'action Pour les employeurs et la main d'oeuvre verront une réduction de 30 There will be a 30 percent drop through the, of the forecourse through the low wage stream of the temporary foreign worker program, except for in the areas of construction and health care. Construction and health care. Employers will continue to be allowed to hire up to 30 percent of the workforce through the low wage stream of the temporary foreign worker program until at least August 31 of this year. Les secteurs clés encore confrontés à une pénurie de main d'œuvre, soit la construction et la demande la In key sectors still facing labor shortages, construction and healthcare employers will continue to be allowed to hire up to 30% of their workforce through the low wage stream of the temporary foreign worker program and until economy and workforce change, so do the measures and the policies we need to implement to ensure the greatest access and opportunities for employers and workers. Now since these are temporary measures, we will continue to monitor and adapt to current conditions. For agriculture sector employees, employers that meet all of the labor market impact assessment requirements, their cap exemption remains unchanged. This does not affect agriculture sector employers or their workers. Other sectors experiencing seasonal demand, like in fishing and seafood, food processing and tourism, will continue to benefit from a one time a year seasonal cap exemption for work duration up to 270 days as we introduced in 2022. The second change is that as of May 1st, the time for which an LMIA is valid, that's the labour market impact assessment, will be reduced to six months from the current 12 months. So à partir du 1er mai, le deuxième changement que nous... So the second change is that as of May 1st, the validity period of new applications for labour market impact assessments, or LMIAs, will be reduced to six months from the current 12 months. So to be clear, employers who are participating in the recognized employer pilot are not affected by this change. Now, the LMIA is an essential process, an essential document that a Canadian employer needs to go through and needs to get before hiring a foreign worker. The purpose of the LMIA is for the employer to show a need for a foreign worker and to confirm that no Canadian worker, permanent resident, refugee or asylum seeker is able to do that job. And by shortening the validity period, we're going to make sure that the temporary foreign worker program is being used with most up-to-date and accurate labour market information. En raccourcissant la période de validity... By shortening the LMIA validity period, we will be ensuring that the temporary foreign worker program is being used with the most up-to-date and accurate labour market information. It encourages employers to prioritise workers that are already here, able and willing to do those roles. I hinted at it just before, but let me be really clear. The third thing we are announcing today is that as of May 1st, we are asking employers that after they consider and offer the job to Canadian citizens, permanent residents and refugees, that they also now prioritize recruiting asylum seekers and underrepresented groups who have a valid work permit and are ready to work as an additional step before applying for an LMIA to bring a temporary foreign worker to Canada. Finalement, et pour préciser, à partir du 1er mai, nous demandons... And finally, effective May 1st, we are asking employers that after considering Canadian citizens, permanent residents and refugees, they prioritize recruiting asylum seekers and underrepresented groups who have a valid work permit and are ready to work as an additional step before applying 
for an LMIA to hire temporary foreign workers. Needs of asylum claimants will mean that we have to collaborate with all orders of government. And our federal government is committed to working with our partners to determine how we can best and most efficiently support them. And I look forward to participating in the May meeting, Mark. And I will be also raising the issue with um, my counterparts at a labor market minister's meeting that will take place in Winnipeg in June. So let me be clear. The temporary foreign worker program is a last resort. We expect businesses and business owners to exhaust every option and work to prioritize workers here in Canada before applying for temporary foreign workers. Employers should not use the temporary foreign worker program as a means to avoid offering competitive wages to Canadians. They need to innovate and invest in their workforce to make sure that Canada is productive and that our country continues to grow. Finally, as of, actually it's context, as of January 1, of this year, employers also need to review the wages of temporary foreign workers every year to make sure that they reflect the increases to prevailing wages. So what does that mean? Well, these reviews ensure that employees continue to pay temporary foreign workers at the prevailing wage level throughout their period of employment. And for the vast majority of cases, when wages are reviewed, they're increased for the workers. If not, they remain the same and they can't go down. For temporary foreign workers in this country, we are actively working to screen out any mistreatment or abuse. The security and safety of temporary foreign workers is our collective responsibility, and we must work together with industry to improve conditions, raise wages, and screen out any bad actors. Through these changes, we are ramping down our reliance on temporary foreign work, uh, work program in certain sectors, making the way for Canadian and permanent residents to gain better access to good jobs. Canada's home to a strong and talented workforce, many of whom are able and ready to meet the needs and challenges of our economy. On that, it's why the federal government has invested in students and training. We've eliminated interest on the federal portion of student loans and forgiven federal student loans for doctors and nurses, a great portion of that for people working in rural communities. And we've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in apprenticeship training to grow our skilled trades workforce. We are also working with partners in provinces and territories to reduce barriers for foreign credential recognition. And these are the kind of investments that are part of the long-term solution that will help build the 21st century workforce. As Minister of Employment, Workforce Deve Development and Official Languages monitoring the labor market trends and introducing necessary changes that balance labor market needs and our domestic workforce is a part of my job. Today, we are taking the necessary steps the next steps to ensure critical labor gaps are filled, workers are supported, and Canada's economy can grow. In official languages, I'll continue to monitor the labor market trends and introduce necessary changes that will make sure we have that balance between labor market needs and our domestic workforce. That's my job. Today, we're taking steps to ensure that critical labor gaps are filled, that we support workers, and that our economy can grow. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, as you guys would have seen from that video before, lots of changes coming to um, Canadian immigration space. Now, I was just scrolling through the internet the other day and I actually saw this video popped up and I decided that, you know, guys, we have to talk about it a little bit because these are significant changes that's coming to the Canadian immigration space. Now, one of the things that we're always saying to people is that immigration is always changing. So if your goal is to migrate to Canada, you can't procrastinate and put it off to next year or next month or next week or, you know, the, you just have to move at it right now because things are changing and things are changing very, very quickly. Now, what jumped out at me was a couple of things that was said that was coming up um, the 1st of May. And one of those things is six months LMIA. Guys, that is a... Uh, big big change now i don't know how it's gonna work really because six months is really a short time and to expect somebody to really uproot their life and move to canada just on a six months basis i don't know i don't know guys what do you guys think i think that is something that's gonna be reviewed again very shortly because six months is really a short time but nonetheless i understand why because the lmia process the lmia system it was, it was a system that has been that has been or is being currently 
abuse right and we speak about it um on our channel some time ago we were a lot of persons who are actually selling LMIA for persons who some of the persons who don't even qualify for the jobs but um some of the businesses they are selling LMIA up to as much as fifty thousand dollars and i thought that was very very unfair so um canada our immigration canada has really identified some of these um ill practices and they're putting measures in place to mitigate it but what about the genuine applicants i think the genuine applicants are the ones who are gonna be left behind um get the worst end of the stick as we uh, as we would say they are the ones who are gonna feel it because in 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 retrospect people who are selling lmi are wrong people who are buying lmi are wrong but the persons who are genuinely looking for those opportunities will miss out now there's a lot more changes that was mentioned in the video one of the things that um also jumped out at me was also in regards to lmia now if you guys don't know what lmia is it's really an acronym for labor market impact assessment now what that essentially means is that for employers who are in canada who are having a hard time finding staff for pos specific positions they can apply to service canada for what is called a labor market assessment now when that assessment is granted it gives the employer the opportunity to employ persons from overseas or persons without a work permit right so you can hire what is called foreign nationals to fill that position now each lmia is lmia is issued per position but what used to happen was lmia were issued for a minimum of 12 months previously but an employer was able to fill 30 percent of their staff capacity by using foreign nationals so if you have a business 30 percent of your staff could be foreign nationals essentially now one of the things that the canadian immigration um, authorities has done is to reduce that 30 percent to 20 percent so essentially only 20 percent of the business employees can be foreign nationals and that is directly um geared towards reducing the amount of foreign workers who are coming into canada again guys this is a big and a significant change that will affect a lot of people as well and i believe that a lot of businesses will also feel a pinch because in rural communities they are already finding it difficult to to staff they are already finding it difficult to staff um, their businesses so reducing to 20 percent will only make it more difficult but that's one of the things that has changed and i think that's also a significant update guys if you are in the construction industry or the healthcare industry good news for you it doesn't affect you so if it is that um you are offered an lmia for healthcare position or for a construction position it doesn't affect you you'll still get a one-year um lmia um work permit and also uh, an employer can hire more than 20 percent as long as you're in the healthcare industry or construction industry so if you're one of those persons who fall into that category good news for you guys i really don't know what to say i think that um immigration canada has been taking some drastic measures towards a lot of temporary streams um in light of trying to tighten up the system because I can admit that there was a lot of loopholes in the system and a lot of persons has been abusing the system lmia for example international students um not even being able to afford them school fee and coming and you know a lot of things has been going wrong so i think immigration canada has identified these things and they're taking some real drastic measures to mitigate these factors like for example a lot of this the, the streams are the provincial nomination streams are even on pause right now so even persons who are in canada right now it's difficult for them to apply for permanent residency because most of the streams are even on pause the rural renewal stream is one of the only streams that i am aware of that is still functioning right now as of this time of doing this video and that can be changed any minute now so what i would like to say is if it is that your goal is to migrate to canada and you know you find um that you fit in one of the categories don't procrastinate don't put it off don't delay it because you know what things can change in a in a split second like we we heard about the international student changes at the beginning of the year and if you guys are new here let's just go over it a little bit it simply means that if it is that you are doing a certificate or a diploma you're no longer able to take your family member being dependent children or spouse with you which is a significant change in order for you to take your 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 dependents with you you have to be doing a postgraduate program 
a master's, a doctorate, or a professional program, meaning a lawyer, a doctor, stuff like that, in order for you to take your family. The proof of funds requirement was doubled from approximately $10,000 to now approximately $20,000. So a lot of these things are in place right now to just tighten up the system, fine tune the system, which I get, but it's kind of exempting a lot of persons from making the transition into Canada. Um, and I can really empathize and sympathize for persons who are being affected by these changes. And of course, my, my advice to you will, will always be the same. Don't give up, never give up, find a way, right? Push through the door, kick it down, make a door if needs be, forward and change your life. That's what I would say. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about the changes that's coming to the temporary foreign worker policy. And is it something that's going to be affecting you? Or do you think that this is a good thing or a bad thing? What do you guys think? Drop it down in the comment section and let me know. Before you guys leave, though, don't, take, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Smash a like on the video. Give it a thumbs up. Really, really important. And share. All right? So other persons can know that big, big changes are coming. Thank you guys again so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Peace.